My name is Jane Rafter. I'm looking for £75,000 of investment for 20% of the company. I started trading just under a year and a half ago with this first innovative product, Slinks. Slinks are a, a devilishly clever pair of sandals. The idea is simple. A luxurious leather base of a sandal with three attachment points. Onto each point, different uppers can be attached, creating a new sandal instantly. They are comfortable, beautiful and unique. When in place, the upper appears fixed and delicate, but it is both detachable and very strong. Women buy on average 450 pairs of shoes and spend £32,000 in a lifetime. The product appeals to this market. The ability to have one pair of sandals that match every dress you own, to be able to go on holiday with one pair but really have half a dozen, to ease from day wear to evening glamour simply by carrying your extra uppers in a small organza bag. I have launched the company with this first creation and to date have sold £37,000 worth. We all know that women love shoes. I know that women love these shoes. They are beautiful, they are comfortable. It's a product that really, really works. Thank you. It's a glamorous pitch from London-based designer Jane Rafter. To develop her luxury customizable sandals, she needs £75,000 and is willing to give away a 20% stake. The dragons have all been listening intently. Jane, I'm Peter. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Have you got a registered design patent on the product? I have a patent pending at the moment and um, I spoke to my lawyer and he said it's in very good standing to be granted within the next six months. What's it on? The, the patent is on the, in, in, is the actual interlocking bead system right. with it. So you have, the, you have the base there and then you've got your, your loop there. Right. You get the end bead, you slide it through yeah. and then you slide that bead up like that and it holds it completely. It's not very complicated, is it? No. What's your background, Jane? What have you done before? Oh, um, I come from Spain, grew up in Spain. Um, I came over here, I've worked for Condé Nast magazines, and then I used to work with Anthony Price, who's a couture designer, making fabulous, okay. beautiful dresses. And £37,000 worth of sales. Yes. So what was your margin, and how much do you make on the, them? The unit cost for the whole set, so for the bases, the bag, and the uppers, and the box, as it comes, my cost is £45. Okay. And um, I sell it for £120. Is that to the consumer or to yes. the boutiques? To the consumer. To the boutiques, I sell them for £60. That's way too much. The dragon's questions are coming thick and fast, and Duncan Bannatyne wants to interrogate Jane on her business plan. You know, I think the quality of this is, 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 is excellent, but what I'm concerned about is whether or not there's a business here. So, do you have any projections? Yes. First year, my turnover would be £130,000 and my net profit would be £20,000. Yep. My uh, turnover in my second year would be £360,000 and my net would be £150,000. And in my third year, I'm looking to doing £760,000 and £380,000. And you're not taking a salary? At the moment, I'm not taking a salary. Year three? Yet. In year three, I'd like to be taking a salary, yes. Of how much? Um, I, I, I don't know. I've well, if you don't know what you're going to be taking, you, you don't know how to do your costs. No, I've, I haven't got an exact breakdown for you, I'm afraid. I have not run a company that has a turnover of £760,000. No, that's pretty that... obvious, Jen. OK. Under Duncan Bannatyne's intense grilling, Jane's faltering. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to scrutinise the product. Um, they, I think they look great, and when you came in, I thought, what a, what a fantastic idea. And it, they're beautifully presented. Thank I you. Mean, really lovely. I can see why women and people buying gifts would be absolutely yeah. wooed to them. But, Jane, they're not very comfortable. Now, they're not obviously supposed to be very comfortable shoes. They're supposed to be pretty shoes, but I think, for me, this type of shoe, you have to be able to walk... Mm -hmm. in it and here the little bobble yeah. is actually now bearing in mind i'm being slightly protected because i've actually got socks on so I, if i could just interrupt you sorry i don't think you've slid the bead up if if oh you haven't fitted it properly you'd have read the instructions <laughs> sorry. yeah it's not that big it's that exactly it's that bead at the bottom that's what's hurting you that's why ah, do you want to that's, that's, it's not do you want to put up. that so yeah <laughs> sorry 
the dragons are putting the young designer under pressure. And Duncan Bannatyne has heard enough. You know, when somebody goes to buy a pair of shoes, they don't want to have to read documentation as to how those shoes fit on their feet. And there's been some problems actually getting them to be put together today. So although I think you're great and I think you should continue doing this, I'm not going to invest, and so I'm out. I'll tell you exactly where I am. The reality is that, that this business is destined not to make money. Okay. If you walk into Topshop, you will see competing products. Admittedly, they don't have the connection point and the detachable bits, but what they do have is something that actually is a lot cheaper, I think personally, works just as well. So I can't invest in you, and I'm going to declare that I'm out. OK. A double blow for Jane. But retail magnate Theo Pafitis knows the women's fashion market well. Will he see more potential in her sandals? I think you've done remarkably well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Getting it to market, selling that many. Now, tell me, this £75,000... Yes. Are we just going to go out and have a good night with it? Or we going to do something more constructive? We are going to do, um, well something more constructive, obviously. Um, I want to move production over to India. I want to bring the cost of my product down and I want to increase my sales. I want to spend £5,000 on improving the website, £5,000 to increase my range, £10,000 of that on stock, £10,000 on marketing and advertising, £15,000 I want to spend on getting them into um, boutiques and that abroad as well. I see them doing very well in Cannes, places like that. And then the remaining £25,000, I'd like to um, spend £15,000. I've put that towards operating costs. And then the £10,000 on the point of sale. What sort of point of sale? It's a um, lot of money for £10,000. What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to have someone to come up and be able to see the product and say, right, I want a base of the sandal. So step one, pick your base. Step two, pick your upper. Step three, put them together, you've got your sandals. It has to be clear and put together easily for people to see. Shane, what do you think you would be able to reduce the price of this for in India? Um, I have looked into it and I think I can bring my unit cost down by about a third. Yeah. Which means you could wholesale for 20 and they could sell for, let's say, 40. Yeah. What... Then you could probably sell more volume. Yes. Jane has succeeded in getting her pitch back on track. But is Deborah Meaden sufficiently reassured to invest £75,000? Jane, let me, let me tell you where I am. Um, I think that I can certainly overcome. They weren't that uncomfortable, and I did have them, you know, and I've... I've... I, I'm not sure whether the size is exactly yeah, right. They may, you, may, I'm sure I'd find a pair I'm that, that fitted. I'm more than so... happy to fit you with any other pair. So I, I could overcome all of that, but I don't think there's going to be room in it for me as an investor. <laughs> and I'm sorry to be saying it, but I'm out. OK. This can be replicated. There's no question about it. Uh, and I think your pricing is wrong. So for those reasons, um, I'm going to make you an offer, uh, conditional, on a marketing and strategy that was to be agreed. And it would be agreed on the basis of getting a reduced price. Yes. Talking to other retailers to make sure we can get volumes in day one. Uh, and I'm going to make you an offer for half the money. Right. For 20%. It's a surprise move from Theo Pafitis. But Den rules state that Jane must be offered the full amount or she walks away with nothing. And only one other dragon is still in. Hello, James. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think it's a fantastic product. I think it's beautifully made. I will match Theo's offer. And I agree with the way Theo has structured it. That means you'll be giving up 40% of the equity. Yes. Are you comfortable with that? Jane now has a full offer, but it's for double the amount she originally wanted to give away. I'd be very pleased if we could meet halfway, um, if we could do 30%. Um, it's not negotiable. On your part or on both of yours part? I think I've got a good product. I think there is potential for growth and I think there is, you know, possibility to make money out of this. I've found a factory, I've got them made, Jane. I've taken them to fairs, I've sold Jane. them. Jane. Yes, Theo. 
Is het jij of nee? Is het jij? Yes! Congratulations. <laughs> Jane has done it. She leaves with the money she needs and two experienced multimillionaire investors on board. Well done.